Howdy, and welcome back to another Time Sticking YouTube video. My name is Jake, as you may or may not know, and today we're going to talk about how Sears made it big, and you'd be surprised at how that happened. So, stick with us through our intro, and we're going to break down the beginnings of one of the biggest retailers in history. Now, back in the 1970s, what was once the retail giant Sears made up 1% of America's gross domestic product. Their juggernaut status as a retailer was far-reaching, eventually leading to two-thirds of U.S. consumers being patrons of their business. But long before actualizing their rising power, and eventually crashing, they started out via a matter of chance. As it turns out, Sears was built off the failure of a watch-selling endeavor. Indeed. Sears, Roebuck & Co. came out of selling a trainload of watches. A Minnesota jeweler would essentially hand Richard Warren Sears the idea for his company. What's more, it took a loss of wealth early in Sears' life to end up in this right place at the right time. Richard Warren Sears was born in 1883 to a relatively wealthy family. Not long after his birth, though, his father lost the family fortune on a speculative investment in stocks. They moved around after this unfortunate turn of events and eventually landed in Minnesota. By the age of 16, Sears was trained to be a telegraph operator and took jobs in South Dakota and Minnesota. Moving into his 20s, Sears took a job just north of a town called Redwood Falls, Minnesota in 1886. It was here a Redwood Falls jeweler was trying to ship watches to rural stores on consignment without actually asking the stores ahead of time. This was actually an old school strong arm tactic by jewelers that was used a lot back in those days. As it went, some old watch selling companies would send huge shipments of watches to other parts of the country or a state, claiming a price tag around 20 bucks, a high markup for most mass produced watches. When the prices were contested, they dropped the prices to close the unwarranted sale. Well, Sears got a hold of one of these watch shipments while stationed at his railway job. He sold them at $14 each for a $2 profit, having purchased them all for about $12 each. This enterprise was successful and not long after the R.W. Sears Watch Company was born. Sears then moved to Chicago in 1887 and put up an ad searching for a watchmaker. A young adult, age 24, named Alva C. Roebuck picked up the ad and the two began building the Sears brand with watches. These first horological endeavors from Sears and Roebuck were pretty successful, but didn't get things off the ground right away. In 1889, two years after starting business with Roebuck, Sears sold the R.W. Sears Watch Company for what would be $2.8 million in today's money. He could have lived off of that for a while, but he teamed back up with Roebuck in 1892, within three years of selling R.W. Sears. A new enterprise took on a new name, Sears Roebuck & Company. Returning to selling pocket watches, Sears and Roebuck opened a market for rural folks to order inexpensive goods from the big city without big city markups. Eventually, Sears, Roebuck & Co. would offer virtually all consumer goods, including home building kits. For a mega low price, patrons could purchase a whole house's worth of materials and build it up. It's unfortunate that they didn't try this out with watches, but trade secrets are trade secrets. Mass production allowed for mass ordering of consumer goods, which put a lot of buying power into poorer, rural consumers. This model would build an empire for Sears and Roebuck, eventually making them the largest retailer in the world. Originally springboarding their business off of watchmaking, Sears, Roebuck & Co. built quite an empire, but it's been on the decline in recent years due to online shopping. However, their history is a testament to how a bit of luck, mixed with persistent business, can build something out of nothing. It's pretty exceptional how Sears, Roebuck & Co. made such a diverse brand out of a watch selling business. By keeping their markups low and their volume high, they set a new standard for other large corporations. If only their later captains would have taken the ship to the online direction. Now Amazon and eBay are the 21st century version of Sears. Who will usurp these giants? Perhaps another business that can adapt with changing technology as the others stagnate. Time will reveal the next victor. Do you happen to own a wristwatch that you bought at a Sears? Some of us do here at Time's Ticking. Let us know down in the comments section. We always love to hear what your relationship is with our topic. Hello, and thanks for watching our YouTube video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and you can find similar videos right here. For more new and interesting content from Time Sticking on our channel, please subscribe at the link here. 
And for more information about wristwatch repair and watch maintenance generally, you can find us at timesticking.com. Thanks so much and have a great day.